Hi, I'm Ted from Pikes Peak Paragliding, back with you today. And in this video, I'm going to go over installing a reserve parachute into a soup air harness. And uh, in this case, we're going to use an Altix 2 harness, but the procedure is exactly the same for if you're doing it in a Quo Vetus, an Alti Rondo, or XP Squared, any of the soup air harnesses that we sell at Pikes Peak Paragliding. So let's get started. We've got our harness here. I'm going to be installing a, Jit, uh, a Gin Yeti uh, lightweight reserve in the medium size. I've got my reserve handle. I have a short line of uh, brake line that I'll use as a, a special tool. I got a couple of uh, stainless steel quick link mallions and a little Leatherman tool. So first, what we want to do is we're going to we're going to put the parachute, we're going to put the reserve handle onto the, onto the reserve. And that's pretty easy, you just do a lark's head knot by passing the uh, reserve loop, handle loop, through the loop here on the diaper bag. So, Pull it tight, voila. Okay. And now for now, I'm going to just tuck this for safekeeping into the reserve pocket. The nice thing about the soup air harnesses is that they have adjustable reserve pockets. So there's a little Velcro flap in here that when you put the Velcro flap down, it makes it smaller. When you undo it, it makes it bigger for a bigger reserve. Since we're using this lightweight reserve, which is relatively small, I have it in the medium setting. So I'm just going to tuck this in here for safekeeping. And then let's look at my lines. So, the lines that come standard with a soup air harness are these Dyneema risers that are single. So you have two of them. And they come together on, and I'm using another stainless steel mallion. This one is um, rated to 1500 pounds. Stainless steel so it won't rust and leave uh, rust stains on anything if you get a little moisture in here. I've got my reserve bridle on one end with a little o-ring holding it in place so it doesn't move around. And I've got my reserve bridles on the other end, again, with a rubber o-ring so it doesn't wiggle around. Now, there is a channel for these to run that runs up the side of the harness that is normally velcroed shut. So we need to open that up. And this goes all the way up above the shoulder straps. And then you undo the Velcro over the shoulder straps. And that reveals the connection point here on the shoulder strap. Again, one of the nice things about the soot bear harnesses is that this piece of webbing is a continuous piece of webbing with your shoulder strap. So even if the seams came undone, you would still be linked to your reserve harness, your reserve so what, how we're going to connect to this now is with these little stainless steel mallions. I'm going to put it in here, like so. I'm going to put a little pinch in it, like this, so it'll sit in there really nice. If you buy a soup air reserve, they come with these really nice trapezius shaped mallions. So there's one. I'm going to do the other one real quick. Now, I'm going to carefully take my reserve bridles and make sure they're not getting twisted. Run them up here. The first one goes over the top, and I'm going to put that together here like so. I'm going to close it up. And I'm going to let, give a very slight crimp uh, twist with my Leatherman just so it's firm. Don't have to crank it up really tight. That doesn't make it extra strong or anything. Then I'm going to carefully lay it flat here. And I'm going to return the Velcro 
to its position and bring this down carefully thread it across the top carefully closing up the belt and now I'm going to do the second one doing the exact same thing Join its companion up here at the top. I'm going to close up the Velcro. And then close up the Velcro here. And now, I need to run these down through the channel, keeping them nice and together so they don't get twisted or anything as I go down the channel, closing up that Velcro. Nice and secure, laying that in nice and flat as they go. Perfect. All the way down to the reserve part. Now I'm going to pull the reserve out and I'm going to put it back in. First, I'm going to carefully S fold these guys into into the bottom of the reserve compartment like this and then finally putting the reserve itself inside now the soup air handles have this on it printed flight direction. This needs to be facing out and the arrow needs to be pointing in the direction you need it to go. Now comes my little lines here. And I'm going to start out putting it through here. This is the this is the outer flat pocket. And you go through here first. This is labeled number one. Keeping this up out of the way. This hole here is labeled number two. So I go through it, number two. And that's going to start closing it up. And then this one's labeled number three. And it's in my loops through there. And I give it a good tight pit yank until that loop comes through all of those. At which point then I'm going to feed the front end of the weed whacker material through the loop to keep it closed. And now I'm going to carefully flip this to the back side so it doesn't rub here when I'm pulling it out, cutting through the loop. You don't want to do that. And now that one's in place. Voila. Two. Here we go. Now the next one. Where's my other loop? Here it is. Right here. This one's number four. Let me go to the other side. all the way across here, and that's number six. And then again, I take the weed whacker line and feed it through that loop, and then 
You can flip this guy over and pull it out. That's it. Now, what you want to make sure here is that when you test this in part, is that when I pull this out, I want to be able to really pull all this all the way out before I start pulling on the reserve. What can happen if this line is too short, you won't be able to pull these guys all the way free before you start pulling on your, res on your reserve and you'll get what's called bag lock and you won't be able to deploy your parachute. So you really need to make sure that you have enough slack on this handle that you can actually pull the handle all the way and have the weed whacker pieces come free before you actually start trying to dislodge your um, your reserve out of your harness. So I'm going to pause it for a second. I'm going to redo what I just did and then I'll come back and show you how to finish dressing it up. Okay, so I've got it back. I've got my weed whacker cord going through here. There's a little window here so I can see it. I can check it that it's good. Going through six. Here's my handle between these two little flops. Now what I'm going to do is I close this guy up and this is this whole thing is going to tuck back up into this little pocket that's right here and that helps seal out dirt and stuff getting into your reserve. And this guy is going to come up under here, under these flaps, and then these flaps are going to actually tuck down into here. And then this flap right here comes right down over top of the handle. Oops. Blah, blah. This comes down. And there's a Velcro on the inside, male Velcro, female Velcro. Put it together. Voila, all done. Now, of course, you need to um, sit in a hang simulator and uh, deploy that guy to make sure that he comes away real easy and smooth. And then you repack him and you do it exactly the way you did it the first time. So there you go. That is how you install a reserve parachute into a super harness. So thanks. Good flying. Be safe. Look forward to seeing it in the uh, big blue skies. All right. Bye.